Hello, this is Bodinian, and I'm coming today with my second user submitted question. Today is a question about selective oxidation, in which we take one reactant and make more than one product. In these three products, we see that our first one has the allylic primary alcohol oxidized into an aldehyde. In our second one, we have both the non-allylic and the allylic primary alcohol oxidized into aldehydes. And in the third one, we form a lactol, which is a fancy word for a cyclic hemiacetal. So, let's get started on what makes this reaction possible. How can you just take one reactant and make three totally different reactants? Here's how. There are many oxidizing agents in existence, and most of them have different properties, allowing special conditions to form selective products. So this is not a hopeless question, and it is very much possible and using our chemical intuition and some ingenuity, we are going to answer this question and ace this ne next test. <laughs> and as a bonus, because I believe that this is a related subject to what we are discussing today, I'm going to show how to selectively oxidize D-glucose into the respective diacid. Save that part for the end. <laughs> Hopefully the suspense will be killing. First, the dialdehyde part of the reaction. The reagent you would want to use to form an aldehyde from an alcohol without further oxidation to a carboxylic acid is chromium trioxide in base. The preferred base is pyridine because the reaction must happen in the absence of water. If there is water in this reaction, you are going to get a different product. The product that you would get if you use a uh, hydrous base would be the deprotonated form of a carboxylic acid. Here the chromium trioxide and the pyridine serve together. The intermediate is a chromium ester. Uh, it's kind of like the oxygen on the, um, well, the oxygen on both of those alcohols gets attached to the chromium. And then uh, one of them is deprotonated. When the deprotonation happens, electrons go from the chromium oxygen bond and then snap back in between the oxygen carbon bond here. That causes uh, aldehydes to be made. And this can happen to any primary alcohol in the compound, not just a specific alcohol and not a other. And a problem with this reaction is that it creates toxic chromium waste. I don't know if you've uh, watched a lot of blockbuster movies, but there was actually a movie made in which a company released a lot of uh, toxic chrome waste into the water supply of a town and caused a lot of people in the town to get very sick. I remember the name of the movie, but I'm not going to say it here for uh, copyright purposes. I don't want to have people knocking on my door saying I mentioned the name of a movie in a video and whatnot. And a lot of professors here will say there's a second way to make aldehydes using a chromium reagent, which is a sodium I don't know, a chromate here in sulfuric acid and they say that brings aldehydes, but we might not want to risk the acid catalyzed hydration of the double bond or risk getting in a carboxylic acid instead of the respective aldehydes that we want. On to the next question. The allylic oxidation. There is a specific reagent that will oxidize only allylic and benzylic primary alcohols to aldehydes while leaving the rest of the molecule here untouched. It is manganese dioxide. Taking our starting reactant and exposing it to manganese dioxide in an organic solvent will yield to us both Z and E 5 hydroxy pent 2 enal. The reason I only drew the Z one was because, again, <laughs> I'm trying to save some paper. I'm one of those green chemists that doesn't like using chromium reagents and doesn't like wasting tons and tons of paper making a video. Manganese oxide and water are side products. Organic solvent is used due to the solubility of the reactants and to shift the equilibrium. Since water is a side product, you don't want to have it in a water solvent because that will shift the equilibrium toward the reactants. This, would, uh, this reaction would happen faster in an organic solvent because the equilibrium is already trying to push things toward the products. If you release water, the water will uh, automatically sink to the bottom of the reaction because water is not soluble in organic solvent. And because of that, it will be constantly removed, pushing things toward completion. 
And that is a very nifty trick to learn for uh, making this reaction go to completion. And then finally, the more interesting one, the formation of the lactol, which is a cyclic hemiacetal. Now for this, we have to learn a little something about ring closing. And if we know enough about ring closing, we know that an alcohol on the same molecule will react with an aldehyde in a um, nucleophilic reaction addition. So our first step here is the same as the one from the previous page. We are going to take our allylic aldehyde that has the alcohol on the non-allylic position free, and we're going to form that. You know, same as always, manganese dioxide in organic solvent creates this. And then the next step is what makes this different. We provoke an acid-catalyzed ring closing. The H plus serves to protonate the oxygen on the carbonyl group, making the carbon on the carbonyl group more susceptible to nucleophilic attack by the alcohol group on the same molecule. The reason that this is possible is because um, intramolecular reactions tend to happen very quickly. Remember, even though they look far apart on paper, that alcohol and that aldehyde are only separated by like nanometers. And that single bond in this area, all those single bonds are spinning extraordinarily fast. So that alcohol is delivered to that carbonyl position very quickly. And that's why the reaction goes to completion pretty quickly before intermolecular processes take over and cause um, somewhat of an, not really an aldol reaction, but an aldol-ish reaction from taking place between different molecules. So we're going to show the fruits of our labor. Unlike the oxidations from before, the acid catalyzes ring closing is an equilibrium process. So when we finally form our lactol product, we're not just going to be sitting with nothing but lactol. We're also going to have starting reactant in that solution because they are converting between each other constantly. If you take an IR spectrum or an NMR spectrum of these, you're going to get signs of both of them. And if you know anything about sugar chemistry, then you'll know that that is a very common thing to happen because D-glucose can both be cyclic or it can be in its long chain form and both of them show up when you try to analyze them. And then the bonus that I promised all of you, I hope the suspense didn't kill you, is turning glucose into a diacid. No mystery here, D-glucose when exposed to nitric acid turns into the diacid, and any simple carbohydrate will do that exact same reaction. Here, the name of the diacid is 2R3S4S5S2345 tetrahydroxyhexane dioic acid, and personally, I think that the uh, name D-glucose being much shorter and more convenient is the one that I would like to have in a jar on my shelf. If I have a lab partner, I'd rather say, give me the D-glucose and the nitric acid instead of trying to tell him, give me the 2R3S4S5S2345 tetrahydroxyhexane dioic acid from the shelf. Because that would just take a mouthful just to say it, you know? So, uh, yeah, you can make this in the lab if you want to uh, convenience yourself with uh, simple names when you want to ask for your reagents. And that's my uh, little teaser now of carbohydrate chemistry, which is something that I'm pretty sure someone will ask a question about later. And I look forward to getting into it with you. So, I hope that you enjoyed my video for today, and I am looking forward to future questions from my uh, fans. So, you can send me a comment on my video or a video response, or you can send a message into my inbox asking a chemistry question that you may have. And be sure to subscribe and like the video, comment, tell me what you like about it and what I can improve, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a nice day.